With these voices, it'd be hard for these gentlemen to prank call anyone. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 male actors with iconic voices. The old house crumbles. Perhaps this storm will finish it. For this list, we're looking at those male celebrities whose voices are just about as notable as their filmographies. Phased plasma rifle in the 40 watt range. Hey, just what you see, pal. Whether they sound imbued with the wisdom of a thousand sages, or like they're ordering a raid on a neighboring village, we can recognize them instantly. You mean you eat other people's lunches? Stop it! <laughs> Number 10, Al Pacino. Call me dad. Here's a man who likes a little volume with his monologues. That's gonna make the f***ing difference between winning and losing! Yeah! Between living and dying! It seems that his voice has evolved over the course of his career, as has his penchant for yelling in most of his performances. Hey, f*** you, mate! Not that we're complaining. There's really only one way to give a motivational speech to your devil spawn, or to declare your intentions while holding an automatic firearm. Say hello to my little friend! And a whisper just ain't gonna cut it. I cared about what he wanted, and I never judged him. Why? Because I never rejected him. In spite of all his imperfections, I'm a fan of man! Number nine, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! He's the Austrian brick house with a voice that won't quit. Come on, kill me, I'm here! Come on, do it now, kill me! In fact, his voice pretty much made the whole I'll be back line from The Terminator as memorable as it is. And let's not forget how much his accent lends itself to awesome movie moments. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Who doesn't like to see former bodybuilders yelling about tumors with a bunch of kindergartners? We love it. It might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. Number eight, Jeremy Irons. What do you want me to say? That I'm sorry I saved your life? Yes. His voice epitomizes that of the distinguished English gentleman. And given his classical training in Shakespeare, it's probably not that far from the truth. Actually, it's largely a matter of nerve. While he may make us want to bust out some Earl Grey, let's not forget that he killed Simba's dad. Long live the king. It's all fun and games and cricket until somebody is plotting to have wildebeest trample their brother to death. I'd hate to be responsible for the death of a family member. Wouldn't you agree, Simba? Ladies and gentlemen. Number seven, Alan Rickman. Due to the Nakatomi Corporation's legacy of greed around the globe, they're about to be taught a lesson in the real use of power. You will be witnesses. You may remember him from when he and some German friends tried to take over Nakatomi Plaza in Die Hard. You dare use my own spells against me, possibly. Or maybe from when he kind of wanted to kill Harry Potter, but not really. I can't help you if you don't even know who you are, stupid girl. He also managed to put that British baritone to good use as a crotchety caterpillar in Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. But you're much more her now. In fact, you're almost Alice. But really, who could play a disaffected, hookah-smoking larval insect better? I'm Alice Kingsley. Alice, at last. You were just as dim-witted the first time you were here. You called it Wonderland. Number six, Vincent Price. And whosoever shall be found without the soul for getting down must stand and face the hounds of hell and rot inside a corpse's shell. Michael Jackson knew what was up when he had him do the voiceover for Thriller. Not to mention, his reading of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven seems like the poem was written for him and he was born to read it, with a dark and definitely creepy delivery. That he saw my wife, Lenore, within these walls. Is it true, sir? Have you her soul in bondage? His is a voice that could lure you quietly to your death while you're too busy being captivated by its coolness. It's like a goth siren song. And though you fight to stay alive, your body starts to shiver, for no mere mortal can resist the evil of the thriller. Get off my lawn. Number five, 
five, Clint Eastwood. Ever notice how you come across somebody once in a while that you shouldn't have f***ed with? That's me. If someone were to breathe life into a weather-worn piece of tough leather, that piece of leather would probably sound like Mr. Eastwood, with a voice that has evolved over the years to sound like he gargles with sandpaper for fun. We used to stack f***s like you five feet high in Korea, use you for sandbags. There's no mistaking that this old cowboy means business. And if you couldn't get that from his gritty vocals, then maybe his perpetually furrowed brow can help you out. You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns, and those who dig. Number four, Sean Connery. Where in the world are you, James? Well, I've just been reviewing an old case. Oh, so I'm an old case now, am I? Shh, it's the office. He was your mom's and or grandma's favorite sex symbol, playing everyone's favorite secret agent during the 60s. Bond. James Bond. It's easy to see why, with a decidedly Scottish lilt that is both charming and enviable. It's a Smith and Wesson. And you've had your six. If a glass of whiskey could talk, he'd probably sound like this guy, and we'd be fine with it. Except when he's trying to bark out orders on a Russian submarine. New Paroski. Then it's just weird. Peace are over. Number three, Christopher Walken. Two little mice fell in a bucket of cream. It's hard to pinpoint what it is about his voice that we love so much. Maybe it's the erratic enunciation. Did you make that up all by yourself? Or maybe it's the Queen's New York accent paired with his fairly consistent tone. Did you see the man upstairs, Sandra? A little. Did you talk to him? No. Well, who did, Sandra? Who talked to the man? Whatever it is, our ears can call it from a mile away. There's something enjoyably creepy about his vocal delivery that would let us get a kick out of him just reading the alphabet. Have some pride in yourself. Have some faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and don't tell these scum-sucking mother nothing. Number two, James Earl Jones. Commander, tear this ship apart until you found those plans and bring me the passengers. I want them alive. His deep baritone is hard to ignore. Not that you'd want to. He's voiced one of film's greatest villains, as well as one of its greatest lion dads. Sure did. His voice is so booming and impressive, it's mind-boggling to imagine that he had a debilitating stutter, let alone that he didn't speak whatsoever for almost a decade. With a voice like his, we'd probably never shut up. Why don't you just knock on the door? I'd have gotten it for you. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You can't close the leads you're given. You can't close shit. You are shit. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it, because you are going out. I have had it with these mother snakes on this mother plane. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Captain, we've got a level one radiation leak. Every surface of the ship is contaminated. Simply changing the air won't do. We've got to get the men off. They never took it off any serious date. Why? Because that's the way guys are. They laugh when you talk dirty, they think you're cute. But after a while, you get a reputation. That's it. You get no respect. You understand? Come on in the house. I'd son. Number one, Morgan Freeman. For millions of years, they have made their home on the darkest, driest, windiest, and coldest continent on Earth. And they've done so pretty much alone. So in some ways, this is a story of survival. Somewhere between the Shawshank Redemption and March of the Penguins, he became the de facto go-to for narration. There must be a con like me in every prison in America. I'm the guy who can get it for you. Cigarettes, a bag of reefer, if that's your thing, a bottle of brandy to celebrate your kid's high school graduation, damn near anything within reason. His pleasant, soothing voice has a paternal quality that makes it easy to get lost in his storytelling. It's a voice that can rock you to sleep, and also recount the details of a horrific car accident without missing a beat. Prison time is slow time, so you do what you can to keep going. Some fellas collect stamps. Others build matchstick houses. Andy built a library. It's a quality that's hard to find in most people, let alone most actors. But it's more than that, really. This is a story about love. Do you agree with our list? What male actor do you think has the most iconic voice? We go around the country killing people who go around the country killing people. 
like serial killer killing. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Do it.